Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring His truth to you. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Thank you for the glory of your truth. We open our hearts to receive every details. And your anointing is present to bring us understanding also. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, praise God. Now then, we've been talking about God's financial system. There is a system that God operates and that system works. It is real. It's not a pseudo thing in our minds. It is real. We walk it, praise God. And you can decide from today that you will never be broke again forever in your life. You can decide that. Why? Because I've been teaching you how to operate an heavenly account. See? I've been teaching you that. Because there is, there is, there is Jesus actually said, he said, don't lay up treasure here on earth. But lay up your treasure in heaven. And in and, and the past two days, I shared with you how exactly you do that. And I told you today we're going to look at how now, haven't known, haven't known that I've got an account in heaven. How do I withdraw from that heavenly account? Simple, praise God. That's what we're going to be looking at. So get ready. Have your pen ready. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 6. Luke 6 and verse 38. Jesus speaking here and he says, Give and it will be given to you. Now I want you to take note of this. He said, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over will Put, will be put into your bosom. Mm. Now, this is New King James. Let me read Old King James because there's something I need to bring out. It says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom? Did you see that? First of all, it says give. And when you give, it shall be given to you. It, the it that you give, shall be given back to you. So whatever you give out, that same thing will be given back to you. Now what does that mean? If you give food, food will be given back to you. If you give money, money will be given back to you. Whatever you give, it shall be given back to you. See? So then he says, shall men this is shall a man it says shall men so wh what you're receiving you are a man or a woman you understand now you as one person you give but then he says what you will receive will come from men now when he says men no, not talking about the male gender alone he's talking about people shall people give back to your bosom so you give as one person and you receive from multiple people. Do you understand that? So, get this in your mind. That whatever you want, I'm teaching how to receive from heaven. How to withdraw from your heavenly account. Get this settled in your mind. Whatever you are going to get will be given to you. Did you get that? I say it again. Whatever you are going to get will be given to you. Now, either the money will be given to you or the opportunity will be given to you to make that money. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? However, it will be given to you. So, you must settle this in your heart that whatever you need right now, maybe you're in a situation, a, 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 a dear situation right now and, and you need help. 
Oh, sure, I'll tell you what to do. See, when you follow what I'm teaching you, the, 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 the result is 100% guaranteed, except you're not a child of God. If you are not a child of God, then be one. <laughs> God. You, you can start right now and say, oh, you know what? I think I'm tired of life, living the way I've been living. I want to live like a child of God. I want to be a child of God and, and get into the flow. That's simple as that. So, everything you want in life will be given to you. Everything you are going to get will be given to you. Listen to me. You know, some people have this problem. They, they think that you, know, you're, you want something and you're praying for the thing. And all you can think about, you know, that becomes a limitation in man. All you can think about is, God, you know what? I live in this kind of house. I'm tired of this. It's too small for me. So, Lord, if you can just make them increase my pay, then I can get a better house. So, you see, you are now going before God. I'll tell you how a lot of people make mistakes. You go before God, and then you say, God, if you will just make them increase my pay, so that I can buy a car. Oh Lord, if you can just give me a better job that pays better, then I can. Now, why are they saying that? You know what's going on in their mind? You know, Lord, I really don't like to bother you. So that's why I'm not asking you for money. I'm just asking you for a good job. See, if you give me a good job, then I won't have to come ask you for anything again. And you know that's a lie. You see, because no matter how much you are being paid, there is just a way that the needs in your life will rise up to swallow it. You know that. If, you, if you've been experienced in this, you know what I'm talking about. You are there, maybe you're earning $1,000 or, or whatever amount of money. And then you are praying, God, man, if they can just increase my pay. Maybe if, I, if, I, if I'm earning like 4,000, I'll do well. And okay, so um, something happens and now, hey, you're getting a better job. Oh, praise God. Now your pay is 4,000. Okay. And then you just wake up and say, you know what? This neighborhood I'm living, it's not helping me achieve. I think I need to move to a, a better neighborhood. Now, what were you paying in this neighborhood? You were paying maybe 200 because you were earning a thousand. Now you suddenly realize you can afford to pay one thousand five. See? And then you go move over there. Now when you move over there, everything that has to so by the end of the day, you are still like the same person who was earning a thousand. Even though now you're in earning further because your needs are still the same thing. <laughs> it's God. That's how life is. So that's why I'm teaching you how to move away from this world system into God's system. So you are earning a thousand and you want to move up in your life. I'll tell you this truth. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You don't need necessarily you don't necessarily need a pay rise to upgrade your life. You say, what do you mean by that? Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. You don't need a rise of pay to upgrade your life. You don't need a rise of pay to get something good for yourself. You know, someone will think and say, ah, I cannot afford that. Why can't you afford that? Yeah, do you know how much I'm paid? You know, people talk like that. They say, oh, we, we, we cannot afford that kind of a house. Why? Do you know how much I'm paid? See? Now, what are you doing? Remember last week I talked to you about mammon. Jesus said you cannot serve God and mammon. So when you begin to talk, do you know how much I am paid? You are serving mammon. So mammon says... This is your pay grade. So everything about your needs must be equated to this pay grade. Who said so? Mammon. 
So you find yourself, hey, I would have loved to get this, but ah, it's way above my pay grade. Oh, I would have loved to do this, but if I do that, man, that's like hmm, five months pay that I'm just throwing away like that. So what? You're stuck. And then now the only thing you can do is to God will just so you now begin to fast and pray. Every prayer meeting you go for, what's a bring write your prayer point? A new job, a better paying job. Every prayer meeting you go for, a better paying job, a better paying job. That's not your answer. Your answer is that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. So you will know that your life is not tied to that pay. Psalm 127. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, anytime I see this scripture, anytime I see this scripture, it, it sends chills, you know, through my bones. <laughs> it's God. I'll read it to you. Verse 1, Psalm 127 from verse 1, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. And look at verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. Why? For so he gives his beloved sleep. No, you didn't get that. I know you didn't get it. So let me read the Amplified Version for you. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know what the Amplified does? It, it blows it up. <laughs> so, so what's tiny that you couldn't see? It's being blown up. And then, oh, oh, oh ah, okay, I see, I see, I see now. Praise God. Now look at verse 2 from the Amplified now. It is vain for you to rise up early, to take rest late, to eat the bread of anxious toil, for he, that is God, gives blessings to his beloved in sleep. Did you see that? Mm. <laughs> I remember the first time the Lord opened my eyes to this scripture. I screamed that day. I, I'm telling you, I screamed. I'm like, what? <laughs> you understand? Like, is this real? No, 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 no. No, uh -uh. this is not in the Bible. Ah, someone's trying to deceive us. Praise God. I said, what? And everything began to make sense. Everything began to make sense. Because let me tell you the truth. The faith life has no qualification. See, you, you, you can't come to God. Because we say God, God shows equality to every man. He doesn't favor one above the other. So God, you don't go approach God and say, God, God looks at us and says, you, you're more qualified because you have been 10 years in this thing. I'll give this to you. You, you've just been two years in this thing. Wait small, you will grow. That's not God. The Bible says he's not a respecter of persons. What he does for one, he's able to do for another under the same circumstances. That's the meaning of that. So now he says, God gives blessings to his beloved when they sleep. That's why he's telling you that it is vain for you to think that the rising up and going back late just to make a living. That's what he's saying. To make a living. He says it is vain to think that way. It is vain to tell yourself, if except I, I get a pay rise, I cannot afford these things. It is vain. Why? Because God can give you those things without a job. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. Your father, your father, isn't that what Jesus was telling us when he says, take no thought for your life, saying, what will I eat? Or close, what will I drink? Or, 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 close, or what will I drink? Or close, what will I put on? He says, don't do it. Don't do it. Why? Because your father gives blessings to his beloved when they sleep. This is your father's personality. This is your father's character. This is your father's... Jesus said, consider the lilies. Consider them. He says, consider the birds. They don't sow. They don't reap. But guess what? They have never gone hungry for one day. 
Your father is taking care of them. And then Jesus said, you are of more value than the sparrows. Think about it. You labor from morning till night every day. Morning till night every day. Morning till Why are you doing what you're doing? Man, man must work. Oh, I've got to put food on my table. I've got a family. Someone's got to feed them. Okay. Yes. So that is you. Yes. But Jesus said, don't do it. I, I, I wish God's children... God will open our eyes and we will see who our father really is. I wish you will see what honor he, he treats you with. You don't know. You don't know how much God loves you. You don't know. So you equate yourself with this suffering world because you don't know how God sees you. Time is up. I'll conclude on this tomorrow on how to receive. God bless you. Bye-bye.